Infecting people all over the world, but new reports suggest the virus may have been manipulated for political reasons, with suggestions the first major target is Ukraine. Well, we now pass over to our Washington studio and uh, RT's Priya Shrida. Priya, is there really something suspicious going on here? Hey, Bill. Well, I think a lot of people are starting to wonder that, but there's been a lot of mass hysteria surrounding the H1N1 virus and the vaccine, so it's important to try to separate fact from fish fiction. And joining me to help try to do just that is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Wayne, thanks so much for joining me. So first of all, I know that you uh, believe that there's some evidence that countries could be exploiting the H1N1 virus for political reasons. Can you tell me a little bit about that and what evidence you have of that? Well, I've talked to people in the research community, uh, virologists who have been studying H1N1. Uh, obviously, the big uh, example is Ukraine, where a million people are infected with a severe respiratory ailment. It's not known whether this is H1N1, but I can say as someone who's had H1N1, it has a lot of the same effects as pneumonia. Fortunately, it's not, it doesn't last as long as pneumonia. Uh, so what, what happened in Ukraine is the uh, government of Viktor Yushchenko uh, thought about postponing the election uh, scheduled for January to May after a popular outcry from the opposition. It was decided not to do that. But we've seen this play out in places like China, which had an outbreak of pneumonic plague, uh, uh, severe clampdown by the Chinese authorities, and also on the Libyan border with Egypt, a severe clampdown on uh, cross-border uh, travel uh, between Libya and Egypt. So we have seen some tendency. Uh, Slovakia, for example, has now closed its border except for one border crossing with Ukraine as a result of this outbreak in Ukraine. And why would the Ukrainian government want to politically exploit the H1N1 virus or whatever it is? That you well, it's known that Yushchenko isn't that popular, so this might have been an attempt by him to try to uh, put some distance between January and May where he could build up some popular support amid a, a crisis. Uh, uh, the, in, and also in Poland, the health minister there says uh, she's not in favor of buying any uh, H1N1 vaccine because she anticipates an outbreak of avian flu between January and March of next year. So there's a lot of uh, health experts around the world who are seeing uh, this pandemic in, in a totally different light than what we're hearing from the Centers for Disease Control and the National Institutes of Health here in the United States. And so if it's not H1N1, what is it then? And what are countries in Europe doing about it? Well, we do know that uh, in the case of Poland, uh, they're, they're not going to be putting out a lot of resources on the H1N1 vaccine. They're looking at this potential outbreak of avian flu. People in the research community are telling me that the H1N1 actually has a lot of similarities to avian flu. Uh, it, this. Uh, uh, was uh, recreated really when DNA from a uh, Inga Likmiut, uh, Inuit woman who died of this in Alaska, Brevik Mission, Alaska, in 1918. They recovered this DNA from her frozen corpse. Uh, it's also uh, very odd that right now there's an outbreak of H1N1 on a small Inuit uh, island called Little Diomede between Alaska and Russia. The odd thing is they haven't had uh, regular air service uh, for four months. So the question is, how did it get to this island? The Alaska National Guard has responded to this crisis. But in 1918, the Inuit village of uh, Breivik Mission was uh, almost wiped out from that particular pandemic. So there's a lot of anomalies with this virus, and the research community is looking at this very closely. Well, a lot of questions still being raised about the H1N1 virus. But for now, Bill, it's back to you. Priya, thanks very much indeed. That's uh, Priya Shrida live in our Washington studio speaking to the investigative journal.